Hi, and welcome to the Data Strategy Gurus podcast once again from ClickWorld Live from Las Vegas. I'm joined uh, by Martin Toms. He's Vice President Market Readiness at Click. Uh, hi, Martin. Welcome hi. to the show. Thank you. So, market readiness seems like a, a heavy title. Can you explain <laughs> a bit where you're positioned and what you really uh, bring to the table at Click? Sure. So market readiness, it's a, it's a relatively new team. So it started around about nine months ago. And we sit in between sales, customers, and product. Uh, and we've got a, a mission to understand what customers need and want, uh, feed that information into product. And it's not only about product features, it's also about packages of services or customer success kind of plays to help them achieve outcomes. Once we've kind of achieved, uh, understood that from the customers, feed it through to the products team or whichever team it's going to impact, then we need to educate sales on what these are to help the customers in their accounts kind of move forward uh, and use all the innovation that we're coming to bring to the fore to do that. Yeah, so it's really on multiple levels. If I know you're talking, you educate sales again, so you help them in the solution, some Correct. type of part. Correct. And really understanding what product gets click and bring as a value to the customers for solving their issues. Correct. So uh, if I give you an example that might help. So I'm, I'm very passionate about moving our customers to the cloud. So we need to understand the challenges of how they move the, uh, getting to the cloud. Then we need to speak to the products organization and maybe the services and customer success organization to say, mm -hmm. what is it we need to do to help them to move to the cloud? And then we package that up to the sales team to allow them to speak to customers and, hey, look, we can help you move to the cloud a lot easier than it may seem initially. Uh, and, we, and we've actually done quite a lot of work around that migration to the cloud. You know, we've got a migration center on the website now, uh, and when the, you know, it's moving forward bit by bit by bit. Oh yeah, that's, that's really interesting where you say we really listen to the customers and then drive that as well. So you can be more a partner than purely a product feature selling a Correct. Type of company. So, um, uh, the, what we're aiming to do, uh, and we're calling it co-creation. Yeah, as a team, we're putting this together and we want to help influence the product from our customers' feedback. Yeah. You know, that's a very putting the customer at the heart of everything. Yeah, and then, you know, influencing how we build product and how we build services to help the customer as well. It's not all about the products organization, you know, how we can kind of uh, build a services package to achieve an outcome. Maybe it's a quote to cash or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so build that package so the customer can get the best outcome from it. Yeah, and you said, uh, well, you mentioned already the, the cloud journey where you're helping them. Which are the most relevant issues or problems customers are facing, not only moving to the cloud, but using data to get the insights? Yeah, so the first thing is, um, if I rewind a couple of years, uh, we would find that there were a lot of customers that um, didn't want to move to the cloud, you know, and we had a phrase, you know, never will I ever, was <laughs> what, what we used to hear. And then the pandemic would come along and now the acceleration is there. Okay, and some of the challenges we have is uh, they want to go immediately, you know, and you have to plan this out carefully. You have to work out, you know, because it's, it's not a big bang approach. You need to do it in a methodical process yes. that works best for the customer, whether it be department by department or, for example, in the click, you know, we've got these applications. Maybe it's the most prolifically used application that kind of moves first. Yes. So it's understanding what they want to do, but it's providing a path for them to do that. And we've got steps to follow. So we've got a, a what we call multi-cloud, which is a hybrid mode. So you can instantly, very, very easily get a cloud tenant, push applications up into there and consume that. You know, this can be done in, in a matter of days. Oh, so yeah. that's very important to do because you get the value immediately. What you don't want to do is kind of delay First all of that. And, and then later. that's right. So, you know, things like that. That's very handy for us, you know, market readiness to understand and help the customers. Yeah, so mostly because they see they have a lot of costs and due to the pandemic, they want to decrease the costs Absolutely. and be more agile. And then they think big bang approach, let's put it in the cloud, but it's a different architecture and it, a different way of, of creating, well, gathering the data, uh, making it available and consumable uh, to the end user. Yeah, so um, it, uh, absolutely. It's, um, it's, a, it's a new approach, a new way of thinking to things. You know, you also have AutoML there, you have application automation there. You know, uh, Click, we solve business problems, you know, better than anyone. 
but now you've got new tools to solve that problem. So there might be a smarter, faster way to solve that problem. So you need to take these into consideration when moving. So yet existing solutions need to be rethought. Sometimes. With the new tools. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yes. 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 And where you say we were working in a co-creation kind of way with our customers, where you saw that the feedback that the customers had fed back in the, to the product, where did you see some customer success stories? Oh, no, absolutely. You know, the, the very, very early stages of, uh, mm -hmm. of market readiness and the co-creation, you know, the, we've generated the migration center, which is on uh, uh, help.click.com, you know, and that is a step-by-step -step guide on how you migrate. Before, there wasn't. So we yes. were asked, you know, well, how do you want me to migrate? How do I, what do I need to do? What are the steps? What are the considerations I need to do? So we have laid this out uh, yes. on our help site to be able to do that. So that was the kind of iteration one of that. But now we're having, you know, we've had, I've been so lucky to have so many one-to-one -one conversations with customers here, yeah. uh, you know, at uh, Click World, you know, that we've learned so many different things. You know, we've got a, a lot of work ahead of us, <laughs> I have to admit. So things missing or different insights or no, it's, problems it's, they're facing? Yeah, no, it's, um, customers do such a variety of different things, whether it's a, an application to kind of procure something or as the, the application to, as, uh, as we explained here, we, we supported the uh, Ukraine refugees kind of moving, making sure yes. aid gets to them. It's, it's ve so varied. You know, and the one uh, our partner, Merwork, has created a product based on Click, which is now in the leader of a completely different magic quadrant. So there are such a variety of things you can do. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we're trying to understand, group some of these problems together and, and try and solve them. Uh, what we are learning is it's, it's very rarely product features. It's more about how to do it. How do I go about doing things? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, those are the conversations we're having, which is great. And people, you know, again, another acceleration is AutoML, machine learning and AI. Oh, yes. It has taken off. If you're not using that or you're not considering using it, you're going to be left behind is how I'm feeling right now. Yeah. You know, but that's suddenly come up overnight. If, again, if I look back to about last year, uh, customers were a little bit hesitant. You know, AI is a little bit scary. It's a little bit... Yeah, don't know what to expect. But now it's almost like table stakes. And as we're in Las Vegas, I think that's an appropriate <laughs> phrase to use. Yeah, we saw it in, in the demo this morning, how they were showing the insights with the AutoML. And it's it's really amazing at what speed you can do that. Absolutely. And before, the, these were the kind of industry models what you had, but you still had to do a lot of uh, manual mapping and understanding the model as such, where now AutoML is kind of guiding you in that way to get these insights. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean... Um, Chat GPT is everywhere. Yes. Yeah, oh, and we're <laughs> and we're still on the. I would say we're still well on the hype of uh, hype of all of this. Exactly. But one of the things you learn very quickly from Chat GPT when you see all the all the messages and everyone kind of says, "Hey, it's not doing this correctly." You know, it doesn't do square roots correctly. It doesn't do mathematical equations correctly. It's a language model. So. Yes. You need to have models that are appropriate for the appropriate type of action that you are doing. Yeah, and with Click Auto ML, you know, we make that best recommendation for you. So you know, that's an easy step for a customer to take. So in that, if I understand, you have the contextualization of the language models, what you, you handle. Whatever it might be, doesn't it? You know, there's language, there's mathematical, you know, yes, you yes, really so don't want... Yes, that's context, what I... Yes, absolutely, the context. You don't want chat GPT driving your car, yeah, but you might want to talk to your car through a chat GPT model, but not have it control the car. Yeah, and um, where do you see, you said you learn a lot now with talking to the customers here at ClickWorld. Uh, what, what do you see where the, the roadmap is going and, and you said we still have a lot of work on our plate uh, yes. to go to. So yeah, so I mean... Say the top three or top five type of things, what you are looking or thinking about to implement in the product in the future. So so it's less about the product for me, that's more James's kind of, James's kind of role for that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so what I'm looking for is um, how to help people get to the cloud again you know we yes. kind of covered that in detail but you know what we find is um customers um they've got, got to start to trust the data you know and i keep coming back to you know you build layers of trust governance whatever it is and you've yes. got to get that trust layer right you know and the, what i keep telling myself is if i haven't got that trust uh, and that data correct if i put a machine learning 
mind you, I'm there. I don't know where it's going to take me. Yeah, so certainly it's kind of educating customers and using our data integration tools along with our analytics tools to make sure that that first step is as best as it possibly it's can first, be. First build and then you will build on top of that and then, you'll, then you've got a path to success, you know, and then you can start using AutoML and be prolific throughout your organization. But start with the basics. Start with the basics. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Martin, it was really uh, nice talking to you. I have uh, one last question. Data connects us all, but music connects us as well. So what is your favorite type of music or favorite band? My favorite band, uh, uh, that is Guns N' Roses. Guns N' Roses. Yes. Okay. And you saw them live very likely. Uh, a long time ago. A long time ago. <laughs> I, uh, I might have a bit more hair at that point, but, uh, but yes, it was Guns N' Roses. I want to say late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. Okay. Martin, thanks very much for Thank your time. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.